Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Rome Total War Remastered. Here today on the channel, we're back with episode 4 of my Scipio Roman Let's Play. Here today, we're going to be continuing our war against the Numidians, which was a surprise attack. And Carthage wants peace to start things off. No, there will be no peace with the Carthaginians. And we are still at war with the Greeks that we're going to be dealing with as well. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like. Subscribe if you're new around here with notifications on. Let me know in the comments, feedback and suggestions for the series. And we'd like me to expand and conquer. I would accept peace for territory in Iberia, so I don't have to sail all the way over there. But they have refused. Got to say a huge thank you to the Creative Assembly and Feral Interactive for sending me an early access code of the... Rome Remastered Game. So a huge thank you to them and their community team. We've got more episodes coming out on the channel over the next coming days and weeks, so stay tuned. We're currently under our reign of our second faction leader, Quintus Scipio. Obviously Cornelius was the conqueror of Carthage and Syracuse in the first couple of episodes. Uh, who is essentially our Africanus of this story. And now Quintus, the second-born son, Julianus died, is now the conqueror of Greece. And he's currently down in uh, Serenica, in Numidian-occupied land. Gaius, who is the heir, which is the third-born son of Cornelius, he is currently dealing with the Numidians. It's kind of a shame that we got betrayed by our Numidian allies. We actually had an alliance with them as well. Maybe it's because my rep reputation dropped down. I think it was in the high 80s, then it dropped down to 60. So I think that's why they declared war upon me, which is annoying. Because historically, Rome and Numidia had a, a long alliance for quite some time. Same with like Pergamon as well. And it's always a, an absolute draw dealing with them. But now that war's been declared, I can't afford not to destroy them. Because we need to keep... We need to be able to go to the more worthwhile territories in Asia Minor, in Egypt, uh, even maybe even Spain. But the thing is, right, we can't allow the hard-worked North African territories, Carthage, Thapsus, to be... Uh, under threat of Numidian occupation. So, we're going to have to absolutely destroy them. So, Quintus here is in Serenica. We're trying to siege this in one turn in Cyrene. I think it's Serenica and in Rome too. So, it's interesting that they do have uh, territory. Like, this far south in Greece. Like, they could have even attacked Crete if we weren't careful. Okay, let's negotiate with the Britons. So we want trade. They have an alliance with the Julii. Really? I wasn't expecting that. Map for map information. Okay. Uh, yes, so this diplomat's going to negotiate with the Armenians. And we've got a general here in Tingus. Gaius Scipio is heading further westward. And more Roman military forces are pouring into Carthage as we can. We're upgrading the wall in Carthage and we're building a bigger temple in Thapsus. Publius is just sitting in Messina. Uh, we could get some merchants maybe. But I just don't know how good they are really in this. So far, Gaius is having a field day against the Numidians. In the last episode, we managed to take and seize uh, Athens, Corinth, and Sparta. And we had a couple wars against the Numidians towards the end of the episode. We'll move my spy in there, so hopefully once we siege it, we can move in within one turn. Okay. Right, my navy can head over there. I don't think Numidia would have a navy. That would be quite surprising. But uh, Quintus Scipio now should be able to deal with these Numidians. So no general inside. We outnumber them two to one. And it's only skirmishes. If there was some decent infantry in there, I'd probably play that one. 
But superior Prinkapes are going to deal with this easily. We only lost about 400 anyway. And we're going to continue to enslave until we hit Marian reforms. One, that's like what you really need population for early on. Once we sort of get, I don't know, 70, 100 turns into the campaign. A bit later, once the eastern cities have like fully exploded and maybe some of the northern ones. We can start exterminating the populace just to keep it in check. But for now, we need to get those Marian reforms going and boost up our population in our small Roman Empire, which we're forging. So, so, Siwa, I think that's how you say it. Wait, uh, why do they, why are they, do they, are they normally this far east? I just think this is more like Egyptian territory. Anyway, I guess we'll send... Quintus to deal with the far eastern Numidia Holdings. It takes seven turns to get there. It's not even a good settlement. Crikey, I hate the desert. <laughs> okay, we can negotiate with some Armenians here. Trade would be great. Uh, map information. Same with Armenia. Maybe getting an alliance with them at some point might be fruitful for Rome. Ceasefire will give us Denari. I do not want peace. Greece. Only for settlement. Yeah, so they're not down for that. A spy is going to move into our city. That's okay. We can deal with that. Parthia and Namidia have made an alliance. I wasn't expecting that. And they still want me to block the port of Pergamon. So, it looks like most of the Greeks that fled Hellas are now occupying Western Anatolia. Let's build watchtowers where we can. Yeah, that's why I hate fighting Namidians. It takes so long to move your way through the desert and once you get there their territory isn't even worth it okay so we've got a small army there that we need to keep an eye out for alright let's move Gaius Scipio who hopefully can be Nemarius I think that's what we're gonna I think that's what we're gonna call the conqueror of Numidia and Quintus can have the name Spartacus for defeating Sparta. Okay, so Flavius here can probably send some units out. Carthage is becoming one of our main recruitment hubs. It's such a valuable city to get, regardless of which Roman faction. Like if you're playing as the Julii, once you sort of secure northern Italy, Patavium, Segestia, if you've got a spare stack, send an army down to Carthage or in, e in uh, not Egypt, Greece to try and get some territory. I do recommend it. And we'll get some more Prinkapes there. We'll keep a small town guard watch just in case we do get attacked because there, see there still seems to be some roaming Numidians around which we need to keep an eye on. Okay, we're... Ferrying more troops from Capua as well. Okay, so Publius and Lucius Scipio are here. So let's send these guys out. Um, and we'll move some of the peasants in just to occupy it. There we go. Good. good. We've freed up some of our fresh recruits. Uh, we could even leave Lucius back if we want. Let's form them up. So, we're slowly but surely transporting our military forces as they come. So, Publius has slightly better command. So, seeing Lucius has zero, he can sit further back. Haven't had any of my armies betray me or been paid off yet. That's why you always should keep a general with your units because they do tend to rebel sometimes Orders. 
Okay, Sextus and Nero are hanging out in Athens. They're currently the governors. We're a little bit further away from Pergamon than what I'd like. We've also got uh, Aulius uh, Scipio. He can probably head to Rhodes at some point. There was a mission there, but I don't know if we're going to be able to get it. Publius, 17. He can start um, heading on his way. Oh, there's a Gaulish navy there. That's annoying. We have to go all the way around. It's always worth holding, like having a navy permanently sit there because it can kill your movements. Let's hope the Gauls move out. Uh, Quintus is still heading south. Four star command. Okay, back over in Numidia. Flavius is moving there with an army along with Gaius. So we have stacking a bit, pushing against the Western Territory. Appius Quintilius as well, an adopted son of uh, Quintus Scipio. Now, thankfully, my spy has opened up the gates here. So we can auto-resolve this one and move straight in quickly against the Numidians. We don't actually need to get any siege equipment. Awesome. So, we've taken a another Numidian city. Um, I guess it's only 4,000. Yeah, we'll enslave for now as well. Town expands, uh, which is good. Gaius is now command ranked 5, which is good. Because he's eventually going to be the head of the Scipio family. The more high ranking military commanders we can get, the better. Okay. Uh, what can we do here? We want to try and retrain as best we can. We'll repair this and we'll bring down the temples as well. Diplomat taking slightly too long to get a little bit of a move on. The Macedonians are moving a spy to Athens. They are still uneasingly close to us in Larissa but we have to keep an eye on them Gaul wants money oh it's because the Julia have finally, finally taken Segestia far out man it's been so long oh we've been attacked here by a rebel navy we do have the numbers on them we do outnumber them two units to their one but the numbers not not so much we've won that back uh, new son, Marcellus. Uh, got some other officers as well. Oh wow, we got some big center positions here. Hang on. I think someone. I think Quintus might be consul. Yeah, that's massive if, if he is. And they want me to block the port of Palma. Which we can more and certainly do. All right, so we've got the main navy here now. Ah, oh, it's Pontus that owns it. That's a that's cheeky. I thought the Greeks owned it. I guess they recently lost it. Okay. Well, looks like we're not doing that mission. I don't want to war with Pontus just yet. Okay. So we've basically got an army here in Athens, which is sitting idly by now. We'll take Rhodes, because we want to try and get the city. If per oh, they've taken Helicarnassus as well. The Colossus in increases naval trade by 10%, which is quite a bit. Especially if it gets up to the 10s and 20,000. That's a solid bit of juice. Alright, so Quintus Scipio 51 is now Consul of Rome. And Gaius Scipio is now Quaestor. The Senate absolutely love me, which is awesome. So they're giving out more positions to the Scipio. So it has. Okay. And we don't need to check our construction report and stuff. I don't know. I don't sometimes you don't need to go into the minutiae of some things. Okay. So Quintus Scipio. Spartacus, Consul of Rome, can continue his 
Eastern Expedition against the Numidians. Alright, Gaius can retrain his force now. And we have Flavius moving up. Build a watchtower there. It's also, like, you want to have decent line of sight there, because the amount of rebels that pop up in North Africa is so annoying. But those Numidians look like they've pushed south a bit. An alliance with Germania. Uh, no. Thank you. I do like that you're at war with Macedon, but I don't particularly want to have anything to do with you. I want the Julii and the Brutii to get worn and beaten down in the Germanian forest. <laughs> so looking at their territory here on the minimap, they've got Denmark, most of modern day Germany, maybe pushing down towards Austria and Hungary. I would be interested in an alliance maybe with some territory, but that's about it. If they don't want to give me territory, I'm not that interested. So they're not really interested in swapping settlements that much. Getting the Greek city of Thermon was definitely the best play we've made so far in a peace peacetime territory negotiation. Let's continue on. War declared. SPQR and SPQR and the Greeks. Lily Bayum is expanding. And they still want me to take Palma. Okay, I hope there's not a decent army down here. I'd be really surprised, to be honest. Uh, I don't know. I don't like going down here. <laughs> We're going to be moving into the Egyptian sphere of influence. And I don't think we're ready for an Egyptian war just yet. We still need to deal with the Greeks and the Carthaginians before we bite off Ptolemy and Bronze Age Egypt. Yeah, so at the moment, Bronze Age Egypt is Egypt, like in the original Rome. It's not realistic, which it should be, uh, like a Hellenic styled faction like Macedon and the Seleucid Empire somewhat. But I'm sure there'll be mods in the future. Right, so basically, for this siege, if I get some Cretan archers, that'd be massive. I'll just ban you, which is fine. We'll take the cost. But getting some Cretan archers in will massively help and diversify this army build as we push into Rhodes, because it can be a little bit tricky to take. Uh, Publius Scipio is coming over here with a full stack. We could send that against the Macedonians, potentially. We'll move to the border here. Or we could send it to Greece, depending. All right, Numidians. We're going to deal with you. General. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. So, Gaius Scipio with Appius. Quintilius Sir. in tow with Flavius Scipio are going to continue to push west into North Africa. We're going to push into Tingus. There are a fair few river and bridge crosses uh, crosses which we need to keep an eye on we'll move my spy further south because they've yeah they've got territory down here as well neptune domini or whatever it's called and then they have tingus tingus would be a really good city if we can try and take it i can't remember what modern city it is somewhere in morocco but Flavius can go there. We'll send Gaius further south. Uh, there wasn't too much of a military presence in Tingus from what I can remember when I saw my diplomat hanging out there for some time before he got expelled. The ambassador. Publius is still moving to uh, Larissa. And... Uh, Sextus and Aulius can look to siege Road soon, but to be fair, we might get attacked during the end turn phase, you never know. Like, we can't sneak an attack here because we don't want to have to fight the faction leader if we can avoid it. Yeah, so 
I wonder if this would be the end of the Greeks if we get rid of them. Sextus just has the command, slightly. Oh no, we can't attack them here. Oh. Well, we'll do that then. We don't want to do it on the end turn. Let's attack the main army. Alright, let's do a quick save. And we'll fight this one here today. Sextus and... Ulius Scipio against the Greeks for the Battle of Rhodes. Let's go. Brave warriors! I have won great renown through leading men to victory. I see no reason to change the habits of a lifetime today. There stand the Greeks, ready to fight or die. Today, I think we should send as many of them as possible to Hades. They stand alone. No friend has come to this place to die for them. Does this not say something about their honor? They're standing among nations? That army represents about half our foe's military might. Not very impressive now, is it? Give them a cheer and put a good fright into them. They have been led here by strutting fools and blustering morons. Now they will pay the price. Our numbers here are about equal. Therefore, a victory here will be hard fought, but glorious. But we are the stronger. They will seek to trick us, but we must be alert and crush these weaklings. Many times I have faced these people, and still they are too stupid to learn their lesson. Today, men will die to teach them afresh that they should simply run away. Now then, look to your front. Mark your target when it comes! Okay, welcome to the battle map. Let's get stuck into this one. This should be a good, a good battle. Let's have a look around because we can already see the city of Rhodes in the background. Can we see the statue? And we can, off in the distance. That will soon fall under Roman occupation. Now, I think moving our army further back from this hill, look, it's a bit of a slope. The white shore beaches. Check out the water there as well. Looks beautiful. Magnificent, even the rocks there as well. Our Roman fleet in the distance. Or theirs, I can't remember. No, they might, no, maybe they might see ours inside, I don't know. Okay, so let's move up the hill. We have four units of Principe in operation. Uh, ten Hastati. One unit of Villetes, which are a bit ex expend. And the rest of our skirmishes is made up of uh, Cretan archers, which are going to massively help. Getting them early on is so good. Because in some total wars, the mercenaries can be way too expensive. But in Rome and, and medieval too, particularly if you lose the, use them a lot, not so much for garrisoning cities, but like, only if you desperately need to. But using them and fighting with them is always good. So, we'll move back here. We'll do the classic Total War corner camp. Because we want to use our skirmishers and archers as best we can. If we can sit back, allow our pillar to rain fire and death against the Greeks. Because they do arguably have better hoplites. Oh, hang on. What's this? Their reinforcements are coming from here. Well, send the send it send a hang on, send a Principe unit and our cavalry. So the Greeks are moving in with their uh, decent phalanx, but the faction leader of the Greeks is coming in here. I do kind of like that as you get more traits and experience with your faction leader, the size of the general unit grows. It's a lot of pikes there. We are going to struggle in hand-to-hand -hand combat with them, so we have to pull back. We need to use our skirmishes as best we can. I wish I had just a couple more. Oh, 
ideally four units of cavalry. Three to four units of skirmishers would be ideal. Okay, so we're going to move up Sextus and Scipio here. Just get away from those pikes. If we can somehow draw, surround, and get rid of their faction leader, the only general in this. They do have just like a random general. A random captain, to be specific. In the main army that we're attacking. I'm surprised the reinforcements deployed there. I guess it came out from the city. Oh, it's such a large general's bodyguard. And they are making things difficult. Intertwining with the phalanx there. Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Hit those. Hit the... Hit the... Brinker bays. They should be able to hold their own for a little bit. Ah, I wanted them to get their shot off. Sitting flat-footed was not the play. Look at that. They lost 40 in that charge. Well, maybe a real charge with two generals might be able to bring it back in our favor. Come on, men, go. Charge! So we are surrounding them. Our Prinkapes have unfortunately fled. That could have been so much better if they just got that charge off. Our generals are fighting theirs. It's a two-on-one situation here. The Roman equites are carving through the rear of the Greek general. I don't know what their hoplites are doing. They're just sitting idly by. I don't mind if Sextus dies, but it's mostly Scipio I'm, I'm more so careful. We have to pull out here because... Those phalanx are getting way too close for my liking. But we still outnumber them. 60 to... What is there? I don't know. A dozen. Potentially left in that unit. Okay, hang on. We'll try and do this again. Get around. He'll actually come back. Oh, hang on. We might be able to capture him. He's lagging behind. Hit him. Rummer and Victor. Oh. As if we haven't got him. He's like hanging super far back. There we go. The enemy king is get dead. Good, good, good. Don't lose anyone. Pull back. We've managed to kill the leader of the Greeks. That has massively turned the battle in our favor. Good job, guys. That could have been way better. Look, if we got that, if we got that first initial peeler shot off, we might have been able to snipe him. They, they, for some reason, like, they just, they were trying to get the peeler out, so it killed the momentum charge. They just stood there and copped a full cavalry charge, which is not good. All right, well, we're still attacking them. We've managed to get rid of the gem. We just need to, we managed to get rid of the enemy general. All that now remains is an enemy captain. Now, what we need to do is bait them into our superior position that we hold. High ground, corner camp. Let's hope. We'll move our Cretan archers up to start skirmishing. We're going to speed things up because skirmishing can take a little bit of a time. So, especially if they want to come single fire at me, that would be ideal. Move the cavalry back. Hoplites are now turning away. Thank God I disbanded and brought in those two Cretan archers. This battle could have gone very differently. Trying hitting them from the sides and the rear is always good. They're slightly weaker. If you can avoid hitting units with their shields like directly at you, it makes so much of a difference. So this hoplite unit, pull back is from Athens, I guess. Um, try and hit that, because that could just be an annoying if that charges. Right, they should be okay to skirmish. This should be the last of the General's Bodyguard with his last volley. Perfect. Just in case they charged, it could have been an issue. You don't have to fully rinse them off. 
Because the general's dead, it's going to be destroyed anyway. Okay. Just need to make sure you're... Skirmishing properly. Whoa, what's going on here? Ah. Uh, pathfinding went a little bit crazy there. I think it's because it I couldn't see the border of the map and I was giving out conflicting orders. Along with, I guess, the skirmish mode active. Alright. Just need to keep a little bit more space in between it. These Cretan archers still have plenty of ammunition left. I don't want to have to watch these cavalry, so let's move them back. Fall further down here. What? We Come on! Oh, far out. Why aren't you listening to my orders? Oh, now they're dead. Now they're just not doing anything. Oh, that's such a waste. <sighs> silly, silly, silly. Now those Cretan archers are gone. What a waste. We needed them so badly. That there could have lost us the battle because of pathfinding. Anyway, those poplites are getting close enough to our Hastati, so they should be able to start hitting them there. And they are a well placed peeler. Should be able to shred that unit. High ground. Overlooking the sea from whence they came. We haven't gotten rid of numerically too many of them, but the battle I think is turning back on our side. That's so annoying, man. Let's hit these slingers. We should be able to outbeat them, but slingers. I think it's with Balearic slingers. They do have a slight shield on their left hand side because so they do have a, a small amount of missile resistance. They're very, very good. Slingers are so underrated in Total Wars. Well, people, people who know go on about them, but I feel like some people tend to prioritise. Other units over them. They're very, very good. I right, move back here. A well-placed rocket peeler can be better than an arrow sometimes. So they're slowly moving up one hoplite at a time, which is perfect. It's exactly what we want. Isolating and focusing all our fire on one allows them to break and retreat. And once they've broken formation, we can just shred them down. Perfect. Because... <laughs> Although the Romans are still very good on this game, I'm very hard, very hard, the Hastati can get caught in compromising situations. We're still fighting with tier 1 units at the end of the day. For the majority of my armies. At this stage, we might have even rushed, rushed Marian reforms. In the vanilla version. Because once we get early and legionary cohort we'll be laughing those urban cohort are the ones that we want to desire okay let's move my generals up we don't really have any skirmishes that's the thing sometimes like the AO is like okay we don't want to push the really well fortified position, but sometimes if you can get your cavalry down here, false charge close enough, it can bring them forward. But they don't seem to be very interested. Right, let's just reform that because there's a gap in our front line. 
We'll move our skirmishes forward. So they didn't take the bait from the cavalry, but maybe from the skirmishes they might give chase. We could even send some of our Hastati down here. The ones that do have Peeler. Are you... Yeah, they're just sort of chilling. Hit those units further at the back if you can. I just don't know if you can get the range. No. Fold them back then. Right, we've got some Hastati here. Now, these guys should be quick enough. To run back and outrun Phalanx. So, we'll just try and get some Peeler shot off here. So ambitious being that close. Okay. Well, let's move back. Hmm. We could even retreat from this. If they're not going to charge... Like, we've used all our ammunition. Like, if we frontal assault this... I don't think we're going to win. We've killed the enemy king. We've used all our... skirmishes. We haven't done enough damage, to be fair. I think a tactical withdrawal... Because we attack them at the end of the day... Is the play. So we're going to retreat from this one. It's technically going to be a defeat, but if we charge that, I don't think we could even wrap around enough as well. We'll retreat and we'll fight another day. But, we have managed to draw out the garrison. Yeah, so we lost 400. We killed... Yeah, we didn't kill as many. We only killed a couple hundred. Man, oh man. Those units are so strong. So, we'll, we'll tactically withdraw and we'll go at them again. Maybe with some more reinforcements and more favorable odds. However, we have managed to kill their king. And we've actually fallen back to our ships and we've saved it. We've saved the army. And we can get our missiles automatically replenished. If we did have that other Cretan Arch unit, maybe we could have got a couple more hundred kills. But we nearly destroyed the entirety of the garrison on the inside. We could have, like, waltzed in. Ready to sail. Okay, we're going to accept that tactical retreat. Because I just don't think this army's capable enough to get rid of the last Greek army here. Because this is probably their last stand. If they ever lost Pergamon, uh, Halakarnassus as well, this could be the last army. And it's the best... Of what Greece has to offer. Now we're kind of we're going to struggle without cavalry and archers there, skirmishers. So we're going to continue our advancement against the Numidians. We'll push into Siwa, uh, Tabnet is his name. All right, further west, westward, Thapsus and Carthage are fine. Uh, Gaius is pushing south. While Flavius is pushing to Tingi. Okay, we had some a little bit of diplomacy there with the Gauls. Germans and Britons, we got trade with those. Yeah, I'm just waiting for war to sort of break out between them. The Julii and the Brutii. Sorry, the, the, the Germanians and the Brutii. And the Gauls and the Julii. I'm surprised they haven't pushed so far. The Brutii and the Julii for this series have definitely underperformed. If I do say so myself. Macedon is still annoying Athens. Well, they did occupy it at one point, didn't they? It's changed hands a couple times. Oh, Carthage. Never fear, Carthage is here. I forgot about Carthage. We're too busy dealing with... Whoa. Oh, wow. Um, the Numidians. Oh, so my Admiral got killed. Oh, that's annoying. However, we only lost 25 men. A huge storm has ripped through Rhodes. 
Well, we definitely want to get out of there. We don't want to lose Sextus or a Scipio, which we could have done. We'll move Publius down here, but they should be safe, safe there. Wow! A massive storm has ripped through roads. Okay, Gaius can push there. Uh, we might even be able to move my spy in. There's another army outside. Only one star commander, nothing too crazy. Alright, let's move to the bridge here. Uh, just to be a bit safe, then move on. I want the faction leaders there. Along with a couple others. Right, so, what's the army build down here in Siwa? Only a thousand, we outnumbered them two to one. Three units of Numidian Cav. One skirmisher, one spearman, and one archer. Let's take a quick save. Because we are still playing on an early access build. But a clear victory. We'll enslave the 2,000. Because we're still trying to go headstrong for those Marian reforms. Um, what was that? Golem Macedon are at war. <laughs> um, okay. Oh my god, Germania. Can you leave me alone, mate? Look, I don't think it's going to change. I would only do an alliance for territory. Yeah, and they, they still don't want it. It does give me a little bit of a good gaze as to what territory they still hold. This is actually a nearly cheaper way of getting map information for a, a turn for all intents and purposes if you can't get it off someone and want to know where they are <laughs> just go into diplomacy and try and ask for their settlements they're allied with the Spanish still at war with the Macedonians because they're at war with the Gauls, man Macedon allied with the Brutii weird it's a shame that the Seleucids died so quick in this. I think that's a bit of a meme isn't it? Didn't they, like, fall... Didn't they usually get destroyed a lot? In Rome 1 Vanilla? I can't remember. Let me know in the comments. Okay, so maybe if we could get, like, an insane amount of money with the Germanians, I would be interested, but... Pfft. An alliance with a non-Roman faction isn't going to help us out. Because we're going to get dragged into wars. Potentially. Because the Brutii, the Julii, and the Senate, they do seem to react and be quite loyal compared to like other allies. Julia have made a ceasefire, and same with the Brutii. Okay. Time of peace is raining out against a couple of Rome's former enemies. We're still going headstrong against the Numidians, though. I wasn't expecting to go here in this series. I didn't particularly want to. Because, as you can see, it just takes so long to get here. And the population isn't even worth it either. There are some gold mines and stuff further south, but... Really? You know what I mean? Alright, we want to try and push to Tingus. With Flavius. He should be a, big, be a better commander. After a couple fights. Hopefully. Okay, so we'll retrain where we can. We'll build a temple. And I guess we go for round two against the Greeks. So Publius, Scipio can move in along with Sextus. So let's disembark here. So the army's here. And we'll move Publius further south, I guess. Can you get there? You can get there in the wood. I'll go for that. Alright, let's go with round two. We've got reinforcements. We should be able to beat them now. There we outnumber them two to one. Alright, let's siege out Rhodes. And we'll wait for that. Stack to attack me. Okay. We can get some mercenaries, which we're probably going to need. Get some of those slingers. Let's end the turn. 
They're probably going to attack me in the end turn phase with that stack. And once that siege equipment is built, I thought it ended the turn. What? Oh, path blocked. It didn't go. Pontus, hello. Trade. We'll accept that because they do have Heliconassus. I want to get good relations with them. I don't want to go to war with them just yet. But yeah, who would have thought Pontus would be the major power in Asia Minor? After the fall of the Seleucids and the Greeks. They sensed a power vacuum and they swept on in. <laughs> Gaul and the Brutii are now at war. Oh, Spain has made an alliance with the Julii. Okay. Didn't expect that. Right, we need a garrison to defend Siwa, so we'll eventually get some peasants in. But we could look to maybe go against Egypt there with Quintus. But it might be worth bringing him back to deal with the Greeks. Gaius can push south to there. And you can sit there in Tingus as well. Wait, what? Why is there no army there? Where to go? What? No way. My only thinking is that they got destroyed by the storm. No, they must have moved it away. But we didn't see it during the end turn. There's no way a storm killed 2,000 Greeks, did it? Oh, that was really anticlimactic. I didn't have to go all the way back then if they were gonna get they were gonna flee or get destroyed. I guess it's possible because thousands of citizens can get died by natural disasters in this game. Ah. Oh. Well, now we've got three thousand Ro uh, even more, six thousand Romans against a couple hundred. And we'll enslave. Roads. Oh, we've finally taken roads. That's good. We can get the ten percent. Naval trade from the Colossus and the Greek city states are no more. Wow, okay. Wasn't expecting that. So Pergamon must have taken a lot of territory from him, but that's it. She's all over Red Rover. The Greek city states have bitten the dust. <laughs> well, at least we had a good battle. <laughs> we tactically retreated and then a, a storm came along and wiped them out. I didn't expect that. Or they ran away. I have a thinking it was the storm though. What happened there, guys? I thought I thought I actually thought the army was still there. It must have gone it must have been gone for a couple turns. <laughs> Crazy scenes. Okay. Well Sextus can move back to Greece now then. We don't need to have two armies sitting in roads. We'll have a look to go against the Macedonians, I guess. Yeah, the Brutii have taken Potavium, and they've pushed even further north. The Julii have finally taken Mediolanium, and they look to continue on. Right, Quintus can chill here for now. Just need to keep an eye on the Egyptians. Right, back over towards Numidia. They have three territories left, and... We'll probably try and fight that one down there because the Tingus garrison looks nowhere near as big. Although the faction leaders inside, there's only two units of archers. Flavius should be able to beat this one. Clear victory. Perfect. We'll enslave the populace in Tingi. And now we've secured all of like Western North Africa from basically Egypt westward. Perfect. Right. Well. We'll check another save, and I think we'll fight this one. Yes, the spies are over the gates as well. And there seems to be more spears and skirmishes yet. Right, let's fight this one with Gaius Scipio Numerus. The conqueror of Numidia, hopefully. Right, let's fight this one on the battlefield. Warriors, I have won great renown through leading men to victory. 
I see no reason to change the habits of a lifetime today. The Numidian king has sent his servants against us. Do not fear them, for they will be cut down just like other men. They stand alone. No friend has come to this place to die for them. Does this not say something about their honor? They're standing among nations? That army comprises a full quarter of our foe's warriors. Is that the best that they can do? These old women, beardless youths and craven dogs? I think we will grow weary of killing today. They have been lulled into a false sense of security by a few feet of defensive wall. As if that will protect them. We outnumber them comfortably, but that should not be seen as an excuse not to fight hard. Why let your brother carry your burden? They will try to keep us at bay and take the coward's way of bombarding us with missiles. We must grasp them by the sword belt in this battle. I have never lost a battle against these people. Why should I start losing now with men such as you at my command? Another victory is at hand. The portents are bad, my friends, but I do not care. I know that I have brave men at my back, and only the enemy in front of me. And remember this above all. Our Roman gods are watching. Make sure they are not ashamed! I seriously can't believe that against the Greeks. <laughs> How anticlimactic. Ugh. Yeah, I, I guess they got fully wiped out on on a storm. Because there are, like, earthquakes. We did have a volcanic eruption in this series with Mount Etna exploding in Sicily. So, all the gates are open. We're going to be able to surround them. We have seven units of Prinkapes. The rest, Hastati. No skirmishes or cav, but our peeler should be enough if we come up against anything. And we'll push it and take uh, Domingue or whatever it's called. We could open up another far angle on this side. Yeah, we'll do that. Move you there. Try and keep the generals as close as we can, but we just don't want them to get sniped. All right. Prinkapes, battle hardened legionaries from the conquest of Carthage. Maybe even some of them are from Sicily originally. Okay, let's push in. So I guess after the conquest of Numidia, where should we go? All my armies are sort of westward. I guess we could go after Carthage in Spain. Or maybe even declare war against the Spanish, but the problem is they might upset the Brutii. Sorry, the Julii. Because they have an alliance with them. I guess... Maybe dealing with the Macedonians is probably the play. I don't think I want to go further east. So we'll, we'll move those two full stacks that are in... That attacked Rhodes back to Larissa. We'll deal with the Macedonians. And Quintus... Once he's replenished and repaired, and we get sort of the populace and sea war under control. So we'll move in, so we can arc our peeler shots up and over the wall. And start getting some damage in. But luckily we didn't get caught against the Numidians too many times. Particularly in open field battles, they tended to retreat with their cavalry. In a siege, we can outbeat them and put them to the sword. Oh, let's move in there. <laughs> We're already like skirmishing them fantastically. Our Prinkipe should be able to carve them up like carving a cake. If they can get into the city, that is. <laughs> Poor guy got knocked down. Whoa! Wasn't expecting a big old jump there. So, after we take... 
The Mindy, I think I say sad. The Mindy. Um This potentially could be their capital. I'm not entirely sure. But so far. Everything is going to plan so far. Look, we've had some surprises about directions of where the wars are going, but I feel like we're adapting, we're constructing and recruiting well regardless. Look, I wanted to be in North Af I wanted to be in Spain by now, but if we're continuing in North Africa against the Namibians, it's fine. <laughs> and pushing so close to Egypt without Marian forms. It's scary because I really don't want war against them. Just yet. I like to, ideally in total wars, pick and choose my wars. I like to have aggressive wars rather than defensive. Because this, yeah, this is. The Numidians attacked us. We have the Cassus Billy and the justification from the gods in a defensive war, I guess. They attacked us. They burnt and attacked Roman towns. And they will be put to the sword justly. Poor Numidians. <laughs> they didn't know what was coming. Oh, maybe they thought that, like, the conquest of Carthage <sighs> bled us dry. Like it did in real life. But no, we did push our armies to the absolute limit. If they actually like pushed Carthage and thaps us in a concentrated aggressive strike, they might have actually like conquered North Africa. <laughs> because that garrison the the remaining army that took Carthage was very few in number and very few uh, very uh, green around the gills, let's say. Alright, come on. We're moving now into the city. We just want to form up our formation a bit nicer. So they don't get caught in movement transition like they are there. <laughs> Let's move my generals in just to help out slightly. Go here, mate. Let's speed things up slightly. Uh, they attacked. Because, for all intensive purposes, I think this is a GG. I can't see how the Numidians come back from this one. But this is one of their major cities. I can't remember if it's the capital or not. But I am open to doing more on the Rome Remaster, so let me know. Maybe I need to do a faction vote. But let me know what other factions you'd like me to play as, and thumbs up those comments. I definitely feel like I lean towards the Eastern Roman Empire on Barbarian Invasion. But, settings I played as the Scipio, maybe we should play as the Red Romans, the Western Roman Empire. At some point. I think I should... End this Skippy Eye campaign following on with a, a Western um, or Eastern Roman Empire. What do you think about that? It'd be a good follow on. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> oh my god. Appius ran through there. Oh my god. I wasn't paying attention. He he must have just got clipped reforming. Oh god, that's annoying when your generals get sniped. You gotta be careful with your generals in Rome. Because <laughs> even with like rear charges, when you hit them so hard, even with like medium to heavy infantry, if you hit them from the rear, it's a calculated risk. <laughs> like, they can get destroyed because they are very squishy. I guess, yeah, I, I think what happened is. There's technically spearmen in there. 
So they might have clipped him. But still, still like 80% of his unit. He's just gotten unlucky there. Ah, uh, we'd lost the general. Well, this wasn't Gaius. He wouldn't have the name Numerous then, I guess, if he got killed by Numidians. Just a little bit longer now. Before the city falls to Roman occupation. Right, let's move in slightly and let's speed things up. Clear victory. Lost a couple hundred, but they deployed 1.2k. Unfamiliar or hostile factions are difficult to negotiate with. Start small to earn their trust. I guess that goes for the Germans. Okay, there's been some senator positions gained and lost. I guess because the console ships have ended and stuff. Well, Julii, Brutii, SPQI are at war with Macedon. Oh, that's broken out in war. That's fine. We can deal with that because we're probably going to go to war with them. Uh, so, oh, so he's he's ended his consulship term, Quintus. He's now censor, and Gaius. Oh, Gaius Scipio is named victor after dealing nearly victory against the Dominions. He's Edel now. Okay, I want to try and get trade with the Egyptians. Try and get some good relations with them. They do actually outstrength us. Are you kidding me? Did Egypt just attack me? I think they might have. Oh my god, they did! Well, what a cliffhanger to end that on. Well, unfortunately on that note, guys, it's time to end episode 4 of the Scipio campaign here on a cliffhanger. War with Egypt has come. Damn it. <laughs> I've only just wrapped up the Numidians. Well... I guess those armies that were going to Macedon, we can head south because we have to deal with the Egyptians now because if, yeah, they must have more than six armies then. If they if that balance of power was that strong, ugh, I want to go toward Macedonians. Well, the thing is, Larissa and Thessalonica, I actually don't mind if they fall to Brutii or Julii hands. Hmm... Yeah. Anyway, we ended there, so I guess we have to deal with the consequences of that in episode 5. We'll wrap up. We've still, we're still at war with the Carthaginians, and the war with Egypt's now broken out. Anyway, I'm going to play the outro now and wrap up today's video here. Unfortunately, guys, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already with the bell notification on. Let me know in the comment section down below feedback and suggestions for the video. And feel free to leave a dislike. If you want to support the channel and follow me on my social media links, they are all linked in the description below. We've got the series playlist that you can access. You can also have a look at my gaming and recording equipment. If you want to get yourself some cheap games, check out the link. You can support me on Patreon if you want. Channel members are available. Use creator code SimpsyTotalWar on the Epic Games Store checkout uh, to flick me a couple of bucks. We've got Twitter, Discord, merchandise, Facebook, Steam Group, Instagram, Twitch, and Google Plus links all in the description below as well. But above all, guys, make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. My name has been Simsy. Much love from Australia. Goodbye.